parking tickets and leave me alone. Stick to something you know about. Listen, my daughter was about your age. Then she met a guy like you. Now she's dead. You still believe in ghosts, pea brain He's a closet! This is all the whiskey you possess? Everyone out of the way of the bulldozer! Hello and welcome to Hello, This is the Doomed Show. I am Richard. Folks, we're back with yet another list episode. We're listing like a sinking ship here at the Doomed Show. So yeah, we had some scheduling issues with uh, the Doomed Show at the end of this year. Uh, so I went ahead and just did some solo episodes. Um, hopefully we'll get back on track and in the new year we'll have actual human interaction between me and a human. As hinted at in the top 10 slashers episode, I was like, why not go ahead and do a top 10 slashers? So I know probably recently brad and i did some top 10 giallo did i say slashers a minute ago yes top 10 giallo (laughs) i'm getting mixed up Uh, brad and i have probably done this not too long ago but i'm trying to keep things fresh i have some fresh opinions and some fresh boring opinions but yeah what else is exciting here what else do i have to report before i jump into this Yeah, this will be the last episode of 2021. It's been such a cool year, dude. Yeah, great year. As usual, when I'm making my lists, in order to figure out what makes the list, in order to figure out what order things are in, usually the deciding factor comes down to what do I want to watch right now? Like right now. What can I just drop everything and go run and do? And whichever film wins that wins their spot so let's get into these runners up because i have as many runners up as i do top 10 here we go first movie in this runners up giallo style is a little film called the crimes of the black cat i recently got the blu-ray and was able to reevaluate this film and Strongly enjoyed it, as I thought I would. Glad to finally see it in a nice copy. Um, I was actually really surprised this didn't make it into the 10 spot, the like the last spot. I'll tell you what film jumped ahead of it to make it into that 10 spot there. We'll get to that when we get to that. Uh, but this is like one of those uh, throw everything at the wall and see if it sticks Giallo movies. You got a weird... Method by the killer, you got the killer abandoning that method to just go nuts with a knife or a razor blade, <laughs> and then you've got freaking fashion models, a blind protagonist, and just it's just a great movie. I really, really love Crimes of the Black Cat. And that Blu-ray is um, the one from, I think it's from Cauldron, maybe? It's very decent. Okay, here we go. This almost made it into my list. But one of the things I did with my top 10 this time is each director can only get one film. So that's why this film is not in my top 10. I'm talking about Tenebre from 1982 from your boy Dario Argento, of course. It's such a classic that I didn't want it in my top 10 list, if that makes any sense whatsoever. And it's definitely a drop everything and watch film. It's just... Essential, essential, essential. And yeah, another movie that is not in my top 10 list. A film that is just like cookie cutter, giallo riffic. It, it like signifies giallo. I can't think of a single giallo fan who doesn't list this as the quintessential giallo. Of course, I'm talking about Suspiria 1977 by Dario Argento. (laughs) <laughs> I'm just kidding. I wanted to see if anyone was paying attention. Giallo enthusiasts were until I made that joke. I just like saying Suspiria is a Giallo. Suspiria is a Giallo because it's funny because it makes people mad. <laughs> <laughs> 
moving right along. Here's a classic, big fan of this one. Simon and I did an episode on it, and we love it. Um, but yeah, this is almost top 10 material. But it's called Autopsy from 1975, directed by Armando Crispino. It's sleazy, it's sweaty, it's nasty, it's grotesquely sexy. Uh, yeah, Mimsy Farmer all the way. Can't recommend Autopsy enough, but hopefully, whoever's listening to this, you guys have seen all these, I hope. And if not, good for you. Go see them. Speaking of Mimsy Farmer, another film that's a favorite of mine um, that uh, you know rides that line between, is this a giallo? Is this not a giallo? What's with that ending? The Perfume of the Lady in Black, 1975, directed by Francesco Barilli. Yeah, there is so much to love about The Perfume of the Lady in Black. The tone is weird and mysterious. The It's got this weird, like, hopelessness and claustrophobia. Not mild racism. Next up, The Red Queen Kills Seven Times, 1972. Emilio Miraglia. This movie, again, has a little bit of everything. Gothic stuff, fashion models, way too many characters. Um, yeah, super good. A wonderful film. Another favorite that I can't believe this isn't in my top 10, but I just, I didn't have room for it. It's so weird. Uh, this is Eyeball, directed by Umberto Lenzi from 1975, the uh, inventor of cinema, the inventor of giallo, the inventor of eyeballs. Great stuff. I, uh, I'm i really glad I have that Blu-ray. The, uh, ooh, who put that out? Was that uh, 88 Films? 88 put, Films put out a really nice one, and it's just so great because I had the same old bootleg that I had for years and years and years, which was under the title of The Secret Killer. And it wasn't the worst bootleg, obviously, but it wasn't great either. So it's nice to finally get a get my eyeballs on that. See, I don't know if this next film would be in anybody's top 10 or top 20 or top 50, but Death Carries a Cane, 1973, directed by Maurizio Pradu. I believe that's how you pronounce that name. Uh, this one I was going to pair up with another film called, oh my God. Oh, so sweet, so dead <laughs> for a podcast I was going to do. And that didn't work out. That kind of fell through. The The podcast didn't happen. But comparing um, like one that I loved or thought I loved, which is so sweet, so dead, to Death Carries a Cane, I actually ended up loving Death Carries a Cane more because it's so silly and so silly. And um, did I say silly twice just now? Maybe. Um, it's just very like kooky little movie. Whereas So Sweet, So Dead, while still really good, is very serious, very dark, and it's messed up, dude. This movie's like, oh, well, whatever. Well. Love Death Carries a Cane. Okay, here we go. This movie has been owned by me on Blu-ray forever. And Brad and I are supposed to do <laughs> an episode on it. And we keep putting it off and putting it off and shit keeps getting in the way. I can't wait until we finally get to this frickin' movie. It is, of course, The Iguana with the Tongue of Fire, 1971, Ricardo Freda. My preamble there is because I haven't watched the Blu-ray yet. I've had it for years now, and it's just waiting, like, staring at me, like, come on. And I keep looking at it like, but Brad and I are gonna do it. So eventually, good old Brad and I are gonna cover The Iguana with the Tongue of Fire because we love Ricardo Freda. And it's like the last of his, you know, horror slash thriller movies that we want to cover. Um, would we ever do like his other genres? Maybe. I, I could see that. Like just, you know, gathering all of the films of his we can find and then, and then watching them and doing like a quick review. I don't think we'd get too in depth on like uh, his uh, historical movies or his, um, I guess... Maybe he probably did sword and sandal movies, too. I can't even remember what he did. Anyway, here is a movie that is very sleazy. It, it surprises me how much I love this sleazy movie. Uh, but it's just so damn good. And I think there is finally a widescreen copy of this out there to watch. I've still only ever seen my ancient um, gray market full frame copy, which, of course, is a muck 
with an exclamation point, uh, directed by uh, Silvio Amadio. Amadio? I think it's just Silvio Amado. I might have added an extra I in his name. <laughs> but yeah, this is the classic uh, Rosalba Neri, classic Barbara Boucher movie. Huge fan of this one. And um, it was one of those foundation films. Like once I'd gotten some Giallo movies, I got to watch that one as like the first non-Argento, one of the first non-Argento, non-Fulci, non-Lenzi, non-Martino giallo movies and it really just jumped out at me as something special and yeah it's super good that that's part of one of the reasons why to this day like rosalba neri is one of my favorite actresses um, in the genre cinema that i love so much the spanish and italian genre cinema okay last of the runners up of my favorites and uh this would be who saw her die 1972, Aldo Lado. Aldo Lado, great name. Uh, Who Saw Her Die, great movie. Watched it recently, and it looks so good. <laughs> you know, I had the old uh, Anchor Bay DVD forever, that Giallo box set, and it was really nice to see it all crisp and clean. Um, but yeah, it holds up. I love Venice as a, a backdrop for Giallo. It's so classic. It's sinking. So, you know, we should probably do a scuba movie, but that would be like Amsterdam, I guess. So yeah, this, this is, I'm going to stop these <laughs> runners up because honestly, I love Giallo so much that I could just keep naming stuff forever. Like Fifth Chord, Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward, Torso, In the Folds of the Flesh, you know. <laughs> the Bloodsucker Leads the Dance, The Police Are Blundering Around in the Dark. I could just keep doing this forever, but I won't. Let's get to these top 10 films after a little break, and uh, we will determine whether or not I have 10 films. Magnavox presents Odyssey, the electronic game of the future. Odyssey easily attaches to any brand TV, black and white or color, to create a closed-circuit electronic playground. Odyssey gives you all the exciting action of hockey and 11 other challenging play and learning games for the entire family. Odyssey, a new dimension for your television. Now at your Magnavox dealer. He's listed in the yellow pages. Here they come. The Twinkie, Cupcake, and Fruit Pie Champs. Leave it to them. That's all they eat. So I say when, and I say hostess, because freshness never tasted so good as in hostess snack cakes. So moist and creamy, you know they're fresh. That's why they love the taste. Hostess, Cupcakes, Twinkies, and Fruit Pies. Freshness never tasted so good. Jewelry is the gift to give Cause it's the gift that'll live and live So give the gift you know can fail From B.C. Clark's anniversary sale Most sales are after Christmas But Clark's is just before Most everything is marked way down Savings you can't ignore At Oklahoma's oldest jeweler Since 1892 The Christmas wish of B.C. Clark Is to keep on pleasing you so give the gift you know can fail from B.C. Clark's anniversary sale. Alrighty then, let's get down to the heart of the matter, even if, even if you don't love me anymore. Okay, number 10 in this very contentious list, get it? Because I put the word 10 in the word contentious. This film is the film that beat uh, Crimes of the Black Cat. It kicked it right out of that 10 spot when I remembered it. <laughs> this, of course, is Seven Deaths in the Cat's Eye, uh, directed by Antonio Margariti from 1973. Man, that is a colorful film. It's a funny film because it's so ludicrous. It's just really pretty all around. Just super, super well made and uh, eccentric because you've got like the French pop star and his girlfriend or wife. Uh, stuck in the movie as in, in the cast and you've got this whole like uh, monkey there's a big ape in it it's like sort of influenced by Edgar Allan Poe but <laughs> like Edgar Allan erotic Poe I don't know what it is it's great um, check out in the uh, archives the episode that Naf and I did on it um, it was one of the most confusing episodes to edit 
because Naf and I got lost in the plot and we really got like just stuck in the weeds of the who's here, who is going there, which is this actress, what character is this, and I finally just started cutting this shit out of the episode. So there was lots of lo- lots and lots of debate over the plot that uh, did not make it to the final episode. <laughs> But um, I love that one. It is so pretty. Um, Antonio Margariti, he's just a gem of a man. Number nine. Here we go. Had to pick a Fulci, and it came down to the amazing Don't Torture a Duckling from 1972, which is a masterpiece. But what film did I want to watch more? Like, what film would I drop everything and go watch right now? Of course... That film is A Lizard in a Woman's Skin, 1971, by your boy, The Fulch. Man, this movie is so wild and so weird. Just, ah, excellent stuff. He really, really brought it. He really brought it for that film. You know, I know he considers Don't Torture a Duckling his best giallo, but man, I, I really just find... A Lizard in a Woman's Skin, just totally watchable. Excellent. All right. This, number eight, is one of my very first Giallo films. Um, it was a film that I've purchased four times trying to get the best version of it, which is just sad to admit. Uh, but <laughs> I'm talking about the old public domain classic, The Night Evelyn Came Out of the Grave, 1971, directed by my man, Emilio Miraglio. So when it came down to Red Queen or Evelyn, I had to go Evelyn just because this is like one of my formative films. It really hit me as something totally different from what I was used to seeing. Yes, it's a pretty... Uh, generic giallo in a lot of uh, aspects, but seeing it in that old grubby copy in full frame, having no idea what I'm getting into, all I knew about it was that there's a lady on the cover holding a guy's severed head. And that is the artwork that has been plaguing this movie and misleading people to thinking this movie was anything but a giallo. <laughs> And it's so pretty and so well made. The one thing I can say about it is the lead character, good old Anthony Steffen, uh, who, you know, played by Anthony Steffen, is he's a garbage human being. He's a terrible lead character. And we're supposed to be rooting for this guy. And he's at best a, like a, a, a sadist who might also be a murderer. <laughs> So yeah, um, it's it's really good. It's super good. I love Night Evelyn Came Out of Her Grave. Um, the finale of that film, and if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about, really flipped a switch in my brain. And that was basically the impetus for all this giallo obsession was that ending. And of course, the whole movie is so bonkers. The ending isn't the best thing about it, but you get you get what I mean. Okay, number seven. I refer to this film as my vacation giallo because on uh, my wife, Lietta, and I, on our honeymoon, I brought a DVD player and a stack of movies to plug into the hotel for when we weren't running around sightseeing, we would watch movies. And this movie became a staple. So whenever we were traveling in the state of Florida, I always bring a DVD player (laughs) and a stack of movies, and this movie comes with me every time. It's The Bloodstained Shadow, 1978, directed by Antonio Bito. I love this film. It is great. It's a great late-era giallo. Um, As you may or may not know, I'm very forgiving. I know some people are like, the giallo was kind of dead after 73 or 74, Um, I give the Giallo well into the 80s before it was truly on its last legs. (laughs) And even then, I like some 90s Giallo, too. But this one is so great. The music is awesome. 
it is such a big rockin or a big prog rockin score and again we're back in um freaking venice and venice is like i said an incredible setting for a giallo um it's fairly self-aware it has um a moment or two that are really funny it has several other moments that i don't think were meant to be funny but that are <laughs> and uh yeah I, th- I think um i'm very happy with uh the bloodstained shadow being in my top 10 yeah all right number six this is another episode brad and i did very fun episode it's where i believe it's where brad coined the phrase it's called production value richard and i'm talking of course about all the colors of the dark 1972 directed by the one the only sergio martino this film was not a favorite for a while for me like i liked it but it would never have occurred to me that it would ever end up as like a favorite favorite a top 10 it is so entertaining and so fun to like show to people it's just bizarre and full of nightmarish imagery and um excellent heaping helping of red herrings and strange um plot crap (laughs) i like i really love the uh is it a dream is it not a dream is the dream coming true like who cares satanists whatever it's great man i mean even for even even like the opening credit sequence where the sun is going down and the whole thing fades to black with nothing but the sounds of the night it's just man brilliant brilliant martino bro martin bro okay number five we're at the halfway point here folks dvd see it buy it own it watch it once watch it twice spend hours watching extras beyond the movie and enter the world of stars and directors and the magic they make. Build a collection for the family. With over 9,000 movies to own, it's the most convenient way to watch a movie. DVD. Number five was formerly my favorite Giallo of all time. How did this happen? How did the film I've been telling people for years and years and years slip down to number five? And I honestly think it might be watching it too much. (laughs) I still love it. It's still a favorite. Um, It's a prime example of what a giallo is to me. Um, You know, you've got like all this international cast and you've got fashion models again excellent red herrings and style oh so much style but you know it's lensy so you know it's gonna be tight like a tight little movie of course i've already spoiled it talking about umberto it's seven bloodstained orchids 1972 yeah this was this is still way up there fear not orchid enthusiasts i love this film it's just one of those films that much like the night Evelyn came out of her grave. It was one of those early DVDs that got me out of the Argento Fulci rut. And I was like, what is this Giallo thing all about? And yeah, seven bloodstained orchids just, Oh, it's kind of life changing for me. And that's why it was listed as my number one, but Hey, I am not ready to just do a cartwheel over to my, uh, well, I can't do a cartwheel, but I'm not ready to do a cartwheel over to my movie collection. Grab that frickin' uh, Blu-ray and pop it in. Or am I? All right, let's move on. Number four is, not only is it one of my favorites, it is a great film to show people who not only have never seen a giallo before, it's a great thing to show someone who's never seen an Italian film from the 70s dubbed into English before, because it hits them out of left field it's politically incorrect it's trashy but never too sleazy it's just 
kind of perfect, and I'm talking, of course, about The Case of the Bloody Iris, 1972, directed by Giuliano, man, I knew I was going to have trouble with his name, Giuliano Carnimio. Where's the Blu-ray? We're waiting. We're not waiting patiently. We're waiting impatiently for this Blu-ray. Case of the Bloody Iris was my number one favorite Giallo for a little while before Seven Blood St. Orchids took it over. And it's just such a joy of a film. It's so over the top, so ridiculous. Every trope is in it. Every trope. Maybe maybe there's no J and B in it. That might be the only thing about it that's weird. <laughs> it's making me smile just thinking about it. Um, of course, this is how I learned about Ed, Edwidge Fennec, one of the uh, starlets. Some people consider her the starlet of the of the giallo world the queen of giallo uh but yeah she is she's fantastic in this movie and utterly stunning to behold and of course our man george hilton is just killing it in the movie (sighs) that was an easy film to put on the list not an easy film to put so low on this list what the hell could beat case of the bloody iris and what the hell could beat seven bloodstained orchids let's find out right now this director of the of my number three um, says that this is like his least favorite film, and that cracks me up because it's so freaking good. It's so watchable. It is endlessly watchable, and I can never get enough of this film for some reason. Out of all of this director's output, this is the film that I can just watch endlessly on repeat, and I still don't know why. I can't put my finger on it. Talking, of course, about Dario Argento's The Cat of Nine Tales, 1971, my number three. It is weird follow-up to uh, <laughs> to good old uh, Bird of the Crystal Plumage. Um, it's not as good as The Bird with the Crystal Plumage, but it is just, like I said, it has this weird quality that um, I can't put my finger on. But I I just adore this movie. And it's full of twists and turns. It's got great actors. Um, It's got hilarious hair on the uh, Catherine Spock. Her hair is one of the best helmet heads. She's not even the only person in the movie with a big old helmet head. Ivan Razumov's sister, Rada Razumov, she has like even worse helmet head. God bless her. Um, Yeah, excellent freaking movie. You old Argento, you should love it more. I know he's listening. Speaking of people who aren't Dario Argento, I got my number two Z. Number two out of my top ten is a movie that has a very long title. It has a very long title. The very long title is the title I prefer it under. Although it should be called by the shorter title because the longer title is real stupid, but it's Flashy and catchy, and I adore it. The Twitch of the Death Nerve, a.k.a. Bay of Blood, 1971, Mario Bava. This movie is awesome. Never gets old. It is bloody, crazy, way, way ahead of its time, and um, just utterly perfect. And the more you read about it, the more you listen to frickin' Tim Lucas talk about it, it just enriches the experience. I like it because after years of struggling with hearing what the characters are trying to say, there's finally a good copy of this movie. Sorry, Anchor Bay, but you didn't do this movie right. This movie has lots of dialogue, lots of twists and turns, lots of characters. I would not want to do a scene by scene review on this podcast of Bay of Blood. It would be a fucking nightmare. As Brad and I would say, we'd murder mansion it. We don't want we don't want to do that. But for a viewing experience, it is so fun and wonderful. Never stops moving. Every time you think you're following the character, they get freaking murdered. And no, that's not a spoiler. Come on, people. And it's it's another one of those films, much like Night Evelyn came out of her grave where I want to live inside it, even though it'd be very dangerous to live there. I just want to step inside the movie forever. It's so, ah, it's so Bava-y. I once showed this to a group of friends and they hated it. They all told me after it was over 
that was terrible. Why did, why did you bring this over? It was a complete mess. Um, I think it was partially the DVD where they couldn't understand what people were saying or they just didn't get it or I was hanging out with the wrong fucking people. But, you know, whatever. It was terrible. Then I put on Phenomena by Argento and bada bing, bada boom. I don't even really, I don't really use that. Bazinga. I don't know. They loved Phenomena. Like I totally redeemed myself for the night, but still that's a bitter victory because who doesn't want to watch Bay of Blood with me other than normal sane people. So yeah, that's number two. My second favorite Giallo of all time, Bay of Blood, Twitch of the Death Nerve. Bring back the Twitch of the Death Nerve, people. Hell, let's find the Death Nerve in the human body. We eliminate that, we stop dying. Have some more water. Because I got some shit to say. After many years, like I said, seven bloodstained orchids kicked viciously (laughs) right right in the orchids off of my number one spot. What the hell could possibly be my number one favorite giallo? This is a prime example of a film I would love to live inside. This is like, it captures my imagination. It holds my imagination. It is just superb in every way. I'm not going to say underrated. I'm just going to go ahead and say people dislike this movie. (laughs) Like, people actively don't like this movie as much as I adore it. I don't understand why this isn't, like, the most freaking where's the Blu-ray, people beating down the doors of whoever Blu-ray companies would put this out. I'm just very glad to have picked up the DVD way, way back years ago when I had the chance. Folks, enough preamble. I'm talking about... Beware. There's no place to hide when the dead are alive. The Dead Are Alive, 1972, directed by Armando Crispino. Yes, it is true. This is my favorite giallo of all time. I don't even know where to start. It has great tone. It has ridiculous dubbing. It has Alex Cord and his giant hands overacting. It has J and B all over the place. It's creepy. It's scary to me. Um, it has lots of um, bizarre scenes that um, are, are mysterious in a almost a gothic way. Like things happen that cannot be explained at the time. And even after you've seen the film multiple times, they still really aren't fully explained unreliable narrator going on. It's exactly what I need. It has the vibe, that Euro horror giallo vibe I'm always looking for because it just gets me and um, it's like a happy, morbid feeling that I just love. Ugh. Plus it's got those Etruscans. You know who you can't trust? You can't trust Kins. The Etruscans. So yeah, that's my number one. I don't know what else to say. You got that dude from The Godfather in it yelling at people. (laughs) Um, If you ever want to have some serious fun, watch anything with Alex Cord. Uh, Check out, in particular, the episode of Murder, She Wrote with Alex Cord. It's hilarious. Um, I don't know how he got work. He is Mr. Scenery Chewer. I love him so much. He's great. And folks, that is it. Whew. I can't believe this. I am done with my list here. Sorry for all the films I left out. You know, Stendhal Syndrome, Trauma. What have you done to Solange? I'm serious. I could just name every Giallo. Like, every Giallo fits into my favorites that didn't make my top ten. I love so much of this genre. I hope that uh, is painfully obvious now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if I went uh, looking through my bootlegs, I'd probably remember a few more that I want to include because there's still a lot of things that haven't made it uh, onto to Blu-ray yet, which is fine. You know, it, it, everything takes its time. I just don't want anything to disappear. More films are showing up on YouTube that just need proper subtitling or just need to be restored in some way. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of great Giallo movies that the original elements are gone. But hey, 
you know what? We live in the best age for film collecting, the best age for film fans to find stuff. If you're one of those people who can't figure out what to watch or they, they feel like they've seen everything, you have not seen everything. Trust me. I've been watching this stuff since 2002, 2003, you know, like hundreds of movies a year and I've still never seen everything. Gotta keep searching. Gotta keep finding. There's always more. And if you approach even the bad ones or the mediocre ones with an open mind, you will find stuff you love and people will look at you with a weird glance like, do you just like everything? And it's like, yeah, dude, I like everything. I try to go into everything with positivity and enjoy it because I'm wasting the precious hours of my life I have left by watching these stupid fucking movies. So therefore, I'm going to like it until it bucks me like a Bronco. And then finally, when I'm bloody and battered, I will say, you know what? This one's not for me. And that's it. Happy New Year to you guys. I am so excited to get 2022 kicked off. Get our Brad back. Get Jeffrey back. Get freaking Simon back on here. Get some special guests on here. Get Lietta on the show. Lietta and I have been working <laughs> on some freaking episodes. Unfortunately, we picked um, a very large topic and have a lot of films to watch. So I swear Lietta's going to be on the show again. Um, she has been on the show before. Believe it. And that's truly it. Bye. This is The Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Please check out the other podcasts on legionpodcasts.com. If you'd like more Hello, This is The Doom Show, go to hellodoomshow.podomatic.com or go to doomedmoviethon.com for the archives. If that's still not enough, go to at doomedmoviethon on Twitter. You can write in to Hello, This is the Doom Show. Use the email doomedmoviethon at gmail.com. Doom Show episodes are available on record and 8-track cassette.